Hey, Redeemer family. Wanted to take just a few minutes here to look at a passage from the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians that I hope will be an encouragement as well as uh, an edifying word to us in the time that we find ourselves in. And by that, I don't just mean the the COVID-19 quarantine life that we have been living in for over a month now, but rather to also look toward this time of transition that has already arrived and is going to continue to develop in the days and weeks ahead. You see, our our nation's uh, state, uh, county, city leaders are moving towards transitioning towards a uh, return to the rhythms of life that we're more uh, accustomed to. Various places are opening. The requested restrictions that our leaders have asked us to follow are being slowly lifted. Even now, we're seeing some of that begin to happen. And of course, it's different in different regions. But for us, uh, as members of Redeemer and certainly anyone around us, we're seeing that start to happen. And so we're, we're facing a decision. When do we start to gather again for corporate worship in our building? No doubt there will be continued phasing out of the restrictions that we've been asked to follow. And so how will it look for us to do this? Because you see, this is very important. This is a key time for our local church, and a key time for the church in general. How will we transition back to regular corporate gatherings in a way that honors the Lord, that loves our neighbors, and that cares for the body of Christ? We're going to have temptations to be unkind, to be judgmental, to complain, to argue, and for division to happen in our church and in the church of Christ in general. But of course, this is also an opportunity for us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so let's look at what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. He says, If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy... Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Philippi to encourage them and to affirm the ways that they have been growing and that they have been following Christ faithfully and urging them to continue on in a a manner that is pleasing to the Lord, that is consistent with the gospel calling on their lives. And there's two exhortations in this passage of four verses that I think we see clearly. First of all, the Apostle Paul encourages the Philippians toward unity that flows from gospel-driven love. You see what he's saying here in the first couple of verses? He's speaking of encouragement in Christ and comfort from love and participation in the Spirit and affection and sympathy that will lead to being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. When he's, when he's using this if phrase, it's not so much a question of whether or not they have this stuff, but sort of a, a rhetorical call to examine whether or not these qualities are present in their lives that are leading to this kind of unity. He wants them to have unity that flows from gospel-driven love. And you could also say gospel-driven love will lead to unity in the church. And so that's the first thing. He's encouraging them to unity that flows from love that comes from the gospel in our hearts. Secondly, he's exhorting them toward humility that results in selfless service. You see, he's clearly opposed in verse 3 to rivalry or conceit. In other words, arguments or fighting or competition and arrogance and pride and wants them instead to look at others as being more significant than themselves. Instead of that that pride, that arrogance that leads you to rivalry, that leads you to competition and fighting and and, uh, uh, opposing each other, 
He wants humility. He calls them to see each other as more significant than themselves. In other words, their opinions should be held more lightly than even the opinions of others. Counting others more important than themselves. And then in verse 4, don't look to your own interests, but the interests of others. In other words, take your eyes off of yourself and put them on others. That's the second great commandment, isn't it? Jesus said, love God with all that you are. And then the second command is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so we should be seeking to serve each other selflessly, flowing from a humility. So Paul wants unity that flows from love, and he wants humility that flows from, or excuse me, that results in selflessness. Brothers and sisters, this is an important word for us in this time. In the days and weeks ahead, you're going to hear news from the leadership of our church as to what exactly we're going to try to do in terms of moving towards reopening in a way that is careful and safe and loving and honors our local authorities as well as state and national authorities. And you're going to be tempted on one side or the other to be displeased. You on the one hand might say, wait a second, what's taking us so long? This should have happened a long time ago. Why is everybody worried about this? And on the other hand, you might be saying, wait a second, this shouldn't be happening so soon. Why are we doing this right now? I'm not ready to come back. And and if everybody's worshiping without me, that's not fair. But we must remember that what the Lord wants from us and what the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is calling us to is unity that flows from gospel-driven love and humility that results in serving God one another. And so as we move towards this transition in the weeks that are ahead of us, transitioning to reopening, to gathering again in some normal rhythms, brothers and sisters, let's pursue love. Let's pursue grace. Let's pursue selflessness as we remember the grace of God to us through the gospel, and as we remember the calling on our lives that God has given to us. May he give us strength as we seek to follow him, to serve each other, and to move back towards worshiping together corporately very soon.